Well, good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Yard Duwin Del Griffin Jr. I'm lead and senior pastor of Destiny the Experience Church here in the city of Sacramento, and I am delighted that you tuned in to our Word Encounter Wednesday at 6.45 p.m., and we are certainly grateful to God that you are here, and I'm excited that you chose to join in with us on this evening to hear what I believe what God wants to share with us, uh, our church, Destiny the Experience Church, as well as all of our friends and our family and all of our partners all throughout everywhere who will tune in tonight or who will watch this later on. And so we're so grateful that you're here with us this evening, and we're going to pray and then get right into God's word to hear what he has to say and uh, push further and uh, and uh, have, some, have a good evening, okay? Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. We appreciate you, and we're grateful for your presence. Thank you for being so good and awesome. Thank you for being good and a great God, even in the midst of everything happening right now. Thank you, O oh God, for being good and great to all of us. Even though uh, things don't always seem right, you're still our God and you're still a good God. Thank you so much, dear kind sir. Lord, we ask in these moments that you'd speak to us, speak to our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirits. Allow the words of my mouth and meditation in my heart to find acceptance in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew me a right spirit, purge me with hyssop that I will be clean, wash me, and make me whiter than snow. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray, and every heart said, amen, and thanks be to God. I'm excited that you're here with us this evening, and uh, I just want to share something with you, and I'm going to get out of your way so you can get to the rest of your evening. Proverbs 12.25, Proverbs 12.25, uh, I, I was uh, encouraged to share this um, to with our partners uh, of Destiny on Monday, and then I was encouraged again to share this with you. Uh, this evening. I want to be an encouragement to someone. So I was encouraged to share this with you this evening. And so I want to encourage you in Proverbs 12, 25, one verse, it says this, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Anxiety weighs down the heart or anxiety or worry causes the heart to stoop, but a kind word will lift up a heart or a kind word uh, will cheer that same heart. <clears throat> Glory to God. Um, my father used to preach a sermon uh, when I was a boy entitled, How Do You Spell Relief? The message chronicled uh, the frustrations of this life uh, that we live in, even back then in the 80s. He shared that even though tests and trials have come to make us strong, we still have to endure the pains and pressures of, if, <clears throat> excuse me, of living this life while yet holding on and trusting to the fact that God is our present help and that God has the final say. Um, he would he would strike fire and he began to proclaim and, and shout loud that as sure as his name was Yardley Griffin, that our relief was in the fact that, that we can cast our cares on God because God cares for us. But in the middle of his message, he, di he didn't fail to share with us that even in the midst of God taking care of us, a part, a significant part of our relief was in the comforting care and the comforting words of those who care for us and those who surround us, and those who call themselves Christians. So what my dad would often say in, in this message is one of the comforters of our lives is that there are those who loved us enough to share kind words with us, to affirm us, to encourage us. Found in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, so encourage each other, build each other up, just as you already are. Paul in 1 Thessalonians was encouraging the church to the church of Thessalonica to build one another up. Note, he says that you already major in building each other up. But even though you major in it, do it all the more. Why? Because you never know what someone may need. You never know what someone may be going through. Uh, feelings and situations and mindsets can change at a moment's notice. It can be a phone call or it can be a note that is passed. It may even be a fleeting thought that drudges up the past and, and, and drudges up feelings that you thought you had forgotten and it'll alter and ruin your entire day, your entire evening, your entire moment. And so Paul says, because we never know where people may be at, we never know how they may feel be behind that smile, we never know how they may feel behind that good work, please be sure to encourage and build somebody up. And like Paul, I'm coming like Paul uh, during this Christmas season, using the words of Solomon's wisdom. When anxiety weighs the heart down, a kind word will cheer you up. This, this I, I should say, this year has been tumultuous for all of us, to say the least. Uh, right on through here, I believe I need some encouragement and you need some encouragement as well. 
We, we, we can use a word that may lift us and we can use a word uh, that may push us, not just something, a tangible item, but a word that will bless our hearts and that will warm even our emotions. We've been facing some dark times and we're facing not even dark times in the world, but we even brought into this season our own personal moments. And we've even brought to the season our own tender remembrances of those who were lost. And it's important, I believe, during this time that we not only pay attention to our spiritual man, but we also pay attention to our psychological and our emotional man at the same time. Because not only is this holiday season tough, but it's even tougher because we've been dealing with pandemic pain and we become comatose by COVID. Where we are usually able to get rid of certain things and, and we look forward to, to a change of scenery and we look forward to, to a change of time and, and a change of food during this season. Right on through here, we're missing those elements and we're going to be looking at the same people, the same rooms, the same houses, the same scenery, of the, the, the same kind of feelings. And we're going to be talking to the same people, smelling the same scents. And so, and so I, 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 I dug into Proverbs from my church. And now I'm digging into Proverbs for you to share with you. Guess what? When anxiety weighs down heaven in your heart, that a kind word, a word of affirmation might lift you up. And I, I, I want to share with you tonight that, that anxiety and worries have been pressing on all of us. From the babies having to stay at home and unemployment seeming to run out while they're acting like it's no big deal in D.C., the constant changing of the coronavirus rules, the bouncing in California, staying at home and then be able to go back outside. The constant talk about vaccines and, and masks, but no one is talking about vitamins and eating well and, and exercising. The anxiety of the pressures of teachers teaching from home and parents having to work from home. The anxiety, the anxiety of churches wanting to reopen, but no one is asking the parishioners, do they really want to go back to church just yet? The pressure of feeling like if I say I'm not ready to go back to church, then someone may say that I'm against God. The pressure and the anxiety of feeling that if you say you're not ready to go back, then people will say you don't have faith. The pressure and the anxiety of pastors being blamed and, and being assaulted because people are saying they want to open church back up because they want to open church back up for the money. When no one realizes that the average pastor doesn't even hardly ever gets a check from the church that he serves. The pressure and the anxiety of pastors dealing with members who have expectations of church leadership but have no expectations of themselves during this moment. The anxiety of churches having to deal with, with a decrease in finance, yet people still asking for turkeys and Christmas gifts. Hmm. The, 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 the anxiety of your friends wanting you to check on them, but, 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 but them not understanding that you've been in this moment just like they have been in, and you've been in the pandemic, and the pandemic has been hard on you. The anxiety of jobs demanding the same output while you're working at home. But mom, you're trying to keep baby Johnny on, up on his Zoom and you're trying to keep teenage Christopher from turning his camera off and calling his teacher a bum. The anxieties have been weighing heavy. And I, I, I would suggest to you that, that not only have the anxieties been weighing heavy on them, but the anxiety uniquely has also been weighing heavy on those of us who feel like we have no anxiety because we've turned our non-anxiety into an issue. Because we've been so used to having problems to fix and we've been so used to being able to help somebody that right on through here, nobody needs our help because everybody needs everybody's help. The, the anxiety of churches that 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 the churches having nothing to do, and so churches are creating coronavirus conclaves to meet needs that may not even be there. The anxieties are high and and the anxieties are low, and people are reaching and people are trying to figure out are trying to figure it out and i i've I've come because i i I want to submit to you today that a kind word a kind word may help your stress. You, you don't, you, you right up to here, Solomon says, you don't need a sermon nor a prophet. Solomon says that this individual may, doesn't need a sage or a philosopher. Solomon says that this, this, this individual right now doesn't need a, 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 a tongue talking uh, prayer. Th this individual right now doesn't need anybody to tear down strongholds and start screaming loud prayers and laying in. Right up there, Solomon says, all we need is a kind word, a word of affirmation. 
I hear my daddy say, I hear, I can hear my dad in my ear say, I got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. And if you don't go to church, I, I hear Kendrick Lamar saying, uh, I'm, 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 I'm at the preacher's door. My knees are getting weak and my gun might blow, but I got a feeling Kendrick Lamar that we going to be all right. We, we, we need during this season, a comfort, a relief to keep going in this moment. We assume to our dismay that, that this is only going to last for a couple of weeks. And now we're here at Christmas. And so right through here, I need somebody to tell me that I got nice socks on. I need somebody to tell me that they like my hair. I don't have much. I, I need somebody to remind me that I'm valuable. Solomon says, give someone a kind word. I need someone to make me smile. A, a husband or wife, tell your husband or your wife that you like their Monday sweats. Parent, tell your child that you're proud of them, not because they're getting good grades, but just because they belong to you. I'm proud of you because you're my child. Call your mother and, and if she's no longer here, go visit her space of rest and tell her, tell her for you that she did a good job raising you because you may not be everything, but you serve a God who is everything. And she did something good for you. She gave you her God. Uh, to tell her something. Tell her something nice. Uh, give a nod and a wave to the person rolling down the street. A, a, a kind word. A kind gesture. Say thank you to that man at the door at Walmart. Tell him God bless you. Tell him happy Christmas and Merry New Year. Uh, a, a kind word goes a long way. Uh, James, the, 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 uh, the King James Version says this. And I'm almost there because I don't have a lot to show you. I just want to give you a kind word. The King James Version says... Uh, a uh, heavy, the uh, heaviness makes the heart stoop. Heaviness brings the heart down, but a kind and cheerful word will lift that same heart. A kind and a cheerful word may remove the ice. Uh, the uh, 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 oh, I got this ice box where my heart used to be. A kind word can turn that ice box into a warm spot. Solomon says, uh, we don't need anybody to scream prayers, but if you could just give me a kind word. I don't have all the Christmas gifts, but if you can just remind me that I'm a child of God, I don't have all the friends, but if somebody can just remind me that I'm valuable and that I'm worth it, I, you, you don't know what people are dealing with. They may be smiling, they may be reading their Bible, but they may have forgotten who they were. If you, we could just remind someone that they are good. They are valuable. They are wonderful. They are amazing. You have done a good job. Son, you have done a good job. I am proud of you. Daughter, you have done a good job. I am proud of you. Uh, let, let me help you to the Bible. The Bible says, if you don't know that you are a holy nation, that you are a royal priesthood, you've been adopted into the royal family. The, the uh, Glory to God. The Bible says that his grace is upon you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Uh, the, 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 the Bible says that he gives you grace. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but he's giving you a gift, a, a gift from God that's his eternal life. I've come to remind you that you have the gift, and i come to remind you, no matter what they said, that you are a gift. You are a present. You are someone's gift. You may, somebody may have called you trash, but the Bible says that God is turning your is turning your ashes into beauty. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You are amazing. Don't give up on God because God has not given up on you. And this little pastor preacher boy came to tell you that you are valuable. You matter. And you mean something. You matter because you're someone's mother. You're ma you matter because you're someone's father. You matter because you're someone's son. You matter because you're someone's daughter. No, no, no. Suicide does not deserve you. This world can't do without you because you matter. No, no. Giving up does not deserve you because this world needs you. You matter. Throwing in the town. No, giving up is not an option. I know it's slow. I know you don't have all the money for all the Christmas gifts, but you matter. The best gift that we can have this year is knowing that you are okay and that we see your smiling face. Did you not realize that the post that you make on Facebook, the, or putting praying hands under someone's po post or telling somebody they did a good job when they post something good saying congratulations, you have no idea what you mean to people. Just your simple kind words. A kind word will cheer a heart up. A kind word can stop someone from suicide. A kind word can stop someone from saying something or doing something that they don't want to 
do, a, a heaviness, the anxieties of life will pull you down. But a gentle, kind word, a gentle, kind gesture. You have no idea what someone may be dealing with. But your smile and your nod, you holding the door open for them and tell them, good to see you. You nodding through your mask and you're nodding at them and you're saying, good to see you. You saying, hey, 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 may God bless you. It's Christmas time. You sharing the Jesus story. Maybe you don't have a gift. Maybe you don't have money for the gifts. But your life, you are a gift. Your presence is a gift. You being on Zoom is a gift. A kind, glory to God, and a gentle word. Anxiety makes the heart stoop, Solomon says. But a kind word will bring laughter. A kind word will bring a smile. A kind word will bring joy. For he's turned our mourning into dancing and praise. Glory to God, a kind word. A word that is seasoned with grace. Not replaying my past or not replaying my sins or not replaying who I used to be or what I used to do. But a kind word will bring joy. A kind word will bring, reminding someone that the joy of the Lord is their strength. A kind word. Reminding someone that they're blessed coming in and blessed going out. They're blessed in the city and they're blessed in the field. They're blessed when they come and they're blessed when they go. And they're simply blessed because they were born. Their family is blessed because of them. Their, 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 their job is blessed because of them. When you get on that plane, that plane can't go down because you're on it. And so everybody on that plane is blessed because you're in it. When you're on that highway, there can't be any actions. Why? Because God said it's not your time yet. So there can't be any actions while you're out there. No. No one can go wide because you're there. The world needs you. And the kind word is that you are a necessity. You are essential. You may not work at Walmart. You may not be a doctor. You may not be a lawyer. You may not be a nurse. You're, nobody may be posting you and say you're an officer. You're essential. But let me tell you, you are essential. A kind word. A kind word would cheer somebody up. There's somebody out there smiling. I've made someone smile because I reminded them that they may not be everything they wanted to be, but because they serve a God who is everything, that makes them something. But let me close when I tell you, don't be frustrated. Those of you, you got your joy, you got your cheer, and you're ready to go, and you're ready to text somebody. You're ready to go on Facebook and just talk, start talking some nice stuff and start saying for, for uh, until past, until the new year, I'm just going to put good, I'm, I'm going to post nice and fun and loving and jokes, and I'm just, I'm just going to bring joy to people's lives. But don't be offended. Don't be offended when you run into people who choose sadness over gladness. Because there are some people out there who, 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 who regardless of the love you offer, they will always choose the sad to outweigh the joy of the Lord. Please do not allow that to suck the life out of your joy ministry. Shake it off and continue encouraging people with the joy of the Lord. When you find, hear me, hear me lean in. When you find someone, Instagram, Facebook, when you find someone, when you run into someone who would rather be sad who would rather the more, even though you say, look at what you have left. And they keep talking about, well, my mama's not here. But you said, but your babies are here. But I miss my, well, when you when you find that person, instead of being mad at them, instead of being angry with them, instead of being frustrated with them, this is what you can do. And I want you to write this scripture down. Write down and pray this prayer. Romans 15, 13. Write this down and pray this over their lives. When Even when you feel this way, write and pray. Pray this prayer for them in Romans 15, 13. When you find somebody who would rather embrace the sad than the glad, if, write, write this down and pray this prayer. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that our source, that our king will fill you with joy, will fill you with peace, will fill you with expectation, hope, because you trust him. 
I pray that they'll be so saved that they can't help but to get rid of what's holding them hostage. I pray that they encounter God so much so that they can't help but to let go of the pain that's holding them hostage. My prayer is that is, is that, that the joy of the Lord will take them over so much so that they'll be mad that they can't hold on to their depression. I speak to every emotion and I speak to every depression. God says he's concerned about your mental health. He's concerned about you sustaining your mind. He's, he's concerned that, that, that we over-spiritualize. And we'd rather be spiritual than understand, than, than understand that, that that stuff is real. Depression is real. Schizophrenia is real. And we can't always speak in tongues over it. Sometimes it takes a kind word or a hug or a hand wave or someone to say, I know what you're going through. I've been there too, but I believe in you. Solomon said, anxiety weighs the heart down. Anxiety makes you depressed. Anxiety uh, makes you bipolar, takes you from one pole to one pole to the next pole, and it makes you polar opposites of yourself in the same day, within the same hour. And Paul and, and, and Solomon said, I know that that's true, but I got a kind word for you. You are not your depression. You are not cancer. You are not diabetes. You are not your ailment. You are not high blood pressure. You're God's child. You're a son of the most high God. You are not broken. You're God's child. God wants you to prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Even if someone has to loan you money, would you give God glory that you know someone who will loan you money? You, you, are, you are not wrong for doing what you have to do to be who to be what everything God has called you to be. We've all had to borrow at some point. We've all had to loan. We all, at some point, we've been lenders, and at some point, we've all been borrowers. And God's been with us in every single area. So you're, you're still valuable. And look at how valuable you are that someone would trust you enough to loan and lend to you, knowing that you don't have to pay it back. Yee! So when you get there, don't forget to pray that prayer, Romans 15 13. I pray that the God, the source of hope, the source of expectation, which means I have expectation that you're going to get this, will fill you completely with the joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen. We have the house. We're done. I want to encourage you. 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 As anxiety weighs down, a kind word. David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. And so if there's nobody else there to remind you of your kind word, then you remind yourself. Sometimes I look at the mirror when I'm feeling bad. I look at myself in the mirror and I say, I, I, I must have forgot. I am Yardley Griffin. I, I, I have to look at myself and remind me. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, you, you, you're going low. No, I am yard. Wait, hold on. I'm yard the Griffin. And there is not another glory. There is not another like me. I, I, I know some of y'all think I'm cocky. Some of y'all think I'm airy. airy. But, but no, sometimes I have to remind myself of who I am. I'm a bad mama. Shut your mouth. I am somebody important. I am somebody special. And if you don't think so, my mama thinks so. And if my mother and my father forsake me, guess what? I think so. And God, God, the one who's numbered every hair on my head, he calls me son. God put me in ministry. You have to look in the mirror and remind yourself of not what they said, but of what he said. He called you son. He called you righteous. He changed your nature. He changed your name. He changed your position. He changed your posture. He numbered every hair on your head. God, it's about you and God. So when anxiety weighs down, when anxiety weighs your heart down, a but, connect the conjunctive contradiction, here it is, but, you can't stay there. A kind word, a kind gesture will turn that thing around. 
my prayer tonight is that I gave you some kind words, some kind gestures. And even if I didn't think of all the adjectives to give you, you have some in your mind. You have some in your heart to share with yourself so you can encourage yourself like David did in the Lord, his own God. A kind word. A kind word. Will bring life to you. A kind word. Will help you restart the Lord. Light my fire. Allow, allow people to come into my life in these next, in these next so many days that I can share a kind word so that their lives, Lord, I'm, I'm, this is my prayer. God, allow people to come in my life that I can share a kind word with that would help change the trajectory of their lives, will help change the trajectory of their days. A kind word, a kind word will cheer them up and lift their hearts in the name of Jesus. If you've been listening and you said, Pastor, I need that kind word always in my life and I need to know that Jesus that you talked about, that Christmas is about, I need to know him. He's available for you and if you want him, his hand is reaching towards you and there is no one, there, 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 is, there is no amazing way that we can do it but say, just say, Lord, my, my, my mouth and my heart is hooking up. My mouth is saying it and my heart believes that Jesus Christ died for me. And I believe that he's my savior. And now I'm saved. Just that simple. Just that simple. I believe that he died. And that he got for the, from the cross just for me. And I'm saved. Today, tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you come on and you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? My prayer is that your life is changed. Your life is better. Your life is renewed. And you'll never be the same. Politics can't change it. Frustration can't change it. But you are the same. You are God's child. You are, excuse me, you are not the same. You are now God's child. And God has you wrapped in his loving care for his loving kindness is better than life. You've been going through, but his loving kindness is better than life. People have left, but his loving kindness is better than life. People have walked away, but his loving kindness is better than life. People have made fun of you and picked at you and said, we can no longer be friends because you haven't checked on me during coronavirus, not realizing that just because you're strong, you've had some weak moments during this season. But guess what? God said, don't worry about a thing. Don't worry about a thing. Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And the amazing thing is, it's still nighttime. And guess what? Your joy has come before the morning. Your joy has arrived before the morning. Be encouraged. If you would like, if you were listening, you said, Pastor, you blessed me. You blessed me, Pastor. And I want to sow a seed. You can sow your seed at, at our cash app at dollar sign D experience church. Dollar sign D experience church. Or you can go to our Gilify at Destiny Church of Sacramento and sow a seat there. Or you can always call 916-529-3286. That's 916-529-3286. You can do that right there tonight. You can do that and you can sow your seed. If you were blessed by this word tonight, if, if you're a partner, you haven't sown your tithe, your offering, your building fund, or your pastoral care, you can do that tonight as well. Or a cash app again, dollar sign D Experience Church. Give it a five, Destiny Church of Sacramento or at uh, 916-529-3286. You can sell your tithe, your offering, your building fund, or your pastoral care. Don't forget, Destiny, don't forget your first fruits. We're still getting our, our $1 a day, $1 a day the rest of the year, and we'll be depositing our first fruit the first Sunday of January, okay? I'm so excited, and I thank God for you. Thank you all for tuning in so much. I certainly appreciate it. It's been my pleasure and my privilege to encourage you tonight through God's Word. And I'm making a point uh, for every Wednesday up until uh, the new year, I'm going to be encouraging someone. Uh, I want to be I want to be an encouragement. I want to be sure that someone uh, walks out of this year into next year feeling okay. You may not feel better, but you feel okay. You may not have a New Year's resolution. You may not have a New Year's resolve. You may just say, you know what? I'm just grateful that I made it. And heck, I, I'm, I'm just dragging in here because I saw something the other day. And it was like uh, one of my friends, they posted and it was a thing. It's, it was like a 2000, uh, the show in excitement, uh, uh, 1159, uh, December 31st, 2020. And then it said, uh, then it said, uh, then it said 12, uh, what did it say? Uh, 12, 12 a.m. Um, uh, 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 what, d uh, December 30, December 32nd, uh, 2021, you know, uh, and just, basically it just keeps going. It doesn't, it's not going to stop. It just, it's going to keep going. And no matter what, because a strike of a clock isn't going to change anything, but God will change your heart about how God will change your viewpoint about this whole thing. And so it won't be 
next year, next year. It'll be right now, right now. God is changing me now. And so it doesn't matter what's coming next year because God's changing me now. I'm not making a new resolution. I'm making a life resolve and a life change that I'm going to remain God's child. All right, I love you. I appreciate you. Destiny Church, thank you for being, thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. Thank you for remaining partners of Destiny. It's been my pr honor, privilege, and pleasure that you've stuck with us all this crazy year. And we're going to go into 2021, crazy as ever, and loving God. All right? So, listen, uh, if I don't hear from you or see the rest of this week, I hope to see you Sunday morning right here at 930. And then, uh, then again next Wednesday at 12 noon and 645. All right, I love you. I appreciate you. And I thank God for you. So you have a good night. Y'all have a good day tomorrow. You have an amazing rest of your week. And until we see you again, God bless you. Peace.